Now, I'm delighted to have Nabila Ramdani on the line. Good morning, Nabila. Nabila, good morning. Hello, good morning, Larry. Uh, Good morning to you. I thought I'd lost you for there. It's my old deafness hitting me again. Good morning to you. How are you today? I'm very well, very well indeed. Um, I just, I just one question I'd, I'd like because I've been, I've been reading Tony Blair's article this morning, The Observer, and he's defending the Egyptians' army decision, army's de- decision to remove Egypt's first elected leader. But one reads, and one has been reading over the months now, that the army is in effect a nation within the nation of Egypt. And, and maybe am I correct in thinking, thinking it has commercial interests as well as those one might normally expect of a military force? And could, could it be too powerful a force for any political? party or group to control. You, you're absolutely right, Larry. And what effectively Tony Blair has done is John, uh, join you know, a whole list of countries who have so far failed to uh, name what's happened in Egypt as a military coup. They've been very cautious about the wording and how to put it. We've heard William Hague, our foreign um, uh, minister, speaking of a military intervention. But no country really has named it, uh, you know, as it is, a military coup. And you're quite right to highlight the fact that Egypt has all the issue of the army has always been a prominent one within the Egyptian society. They run uh, businesses, do they not, Nabila? And they also have a massive stake in the economy. They, they actually own 40% of the economy. So for them, it, you know, they're not going to disappear overnight. And in fact, they have been effectively ruling the country for 60 years, since 1952, when um, Gamal Abdel Nasser uh, organized a coup with his free officers to overthrow the monarchy and establish the First Republic. And ever since, the army has been pulling the strings behind the scenes. And what is happening at the moment moment is effectively the army taking advantage of the chaos and the volatile situation in, in Egypt to yet again impose the military rule. And, and what's the, so what's the, I, I read yesterday, it's, it's, is it Al-Sisi, the, the, the head, the head of the armed forces? Yeah. Is it Al-Sisi? The, yes, absolutely. Is he, and, and they were talking about, you know, they happened to mention the article that I was reading that his, his wife wears the full the full headdress and is is obviously very 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 um, a strict Muslim. Is that is that right? Yes, absolutely. In fact, she she she, she wears the niqab. And the irony in all this is that uh, when President Morsi, well, former President Morsi, was elected, was democratically elected as the first civilian uh, president in decades, well, the first ever, but the first democratically elected president in decades, he tried to neutralize uh, the army and perhaps curb their power. And he got rid of, you know, the top generals, the Mubarak era generals, and he replaced the commander in chief of the army, General Tantawi, by uh, General Sisi, who was thought to be a sympathizer of the Muslim Brotherhood, and who has made that clear in the past. So it was highly ironic uh, to see uh, that effectively uh, Morsi was removed by uh, General Sisi when he effectively issued that statement warning him that if Morsi failed to sort out the uh, divisions uh, uh, in the country and to bring about consensus, then he will have to go. So we can safely say that a friend of his actually got rid of him. It, it's, I mean, it's so complicated. I mean, it, but it, it's the. I mean, is it feasible in any way that religion can be gradually, I don't know, driven out, edged out, talked out of politics in 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 Muslim countries? I think I think the wider issue is one of how do you uh, establish democracy in the wake of decades and decades of dictatorship and when uh, the army is all powerful. And this is not an issue peculiar to Egypt. If you look at the history of the Middle East, North Africa, or indeed Africa, all their recent history is dominated by coups and counter coups and the um, the establishment of democracy in volatile countries is really at the heart uh, of all this and i think it, in particular the role of the army um, what we're witnessing in egypt at the moment it is effectively the army uh, yet again uh, reasserting its role as the political kingmaker we've heard yesterday that they want to put in place now uh, an interim government before elections, but what they are effectively doing
doing is that they're manufacturing democracy. They're trying to deliver a ready-made government of technocrats. But this is hardly democracy. Democracy is all about the will of the people. The people has spoken last year. They've, you know, chosen a leader. And, um, you know, some might disagree with that. But, you know, whatever your views about the Muslim Brotherhood, they have been effectively robbed of a democratic mandate. Absolutely. And the, 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 and the point is, I mean, the, the thing that even I, as a, a layman, but with an interest in the, in the subject, have discovered just by careful reading of, 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 of well-observed articles from different, different quarters around the world, watching you, for example, last night on, on Al Jazeera, you know, um, it, it's... It, it, this, this, it's this question of the army being the all-powerful force, and in actual fact, this is all a, this is a game going on around the army with the, with the army basically holding all the, all, all the chips. You're quite right, Larry, and I think, you know, whatever the politics of the situation in Egypt in the moment, the number one priority has to be to stop the violence. It's going to be a, a, a big day of protest today, potentially with more clashes and more bloodshed, effectively pitting those who uh, support, you know, the uh, who want to reinstate the president and the people's legitimacy and who reject an interim government against those who want to restore what they say they call their revolution. And I think what needs to be highlighted again and again is the failure of the army to protect Egyptian citizens. It's the number one duty of any army to protect its people. And especially at a critical point like that, when there's a political crisis and we are seeing extreme violence played out on the streets of Egypt, what Egypt needs needs is a firm, secure mandate for government. And an interim government like that, with the army in charge effectively, is not going to be acceptable, not just to extremists who we've already heard, you know, groups affiliated to, to Al-Qaeda who are going to seek revenge for, uh, you know, the Muslim brothers, as they put it. But more crucially, I think in the long run, this is going to uh, ang- to, to upset Democrats who want, you know, democratic rule in the end. Absolutely. Nabila, thank you so much for joining me. What, what a pleasure and what an honour, I have to say, for, 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 for joining in this.